Hello, this is Daniel from SoundHeadquarters.com. Today we're building a diffuser. get started building this acoustic diffuser. So I use two by two by eight lumber. These are all off cuts from when I built my acoustic panels. So it's nice I got to use up my scrap wood, but I use two by two lumber to make my blocks. This is everything you're gonna need to make our stop block to make sure we have nice and consistent cuts. We have some C clamps there, the screws, the drill, and we're just gonna use a, the same piece of the two by two we're using to build the diffuser to build our stop block. So here's what the stop block looks like. You can see it's really simple. It's just one short three inch piece glued to a longer one foot piece and the C clamp uh, just clamps right onto the fence. And all I did was just pre-drill those two holes, drove it in with three inch construction screws, and then I sawed it so that the face of that is consistent with the cut face of every time I'm cutting these two inch blocks. We have about 400, give or take uh, just over 400 blocks for this two by four foot diffuser. So we wanna make sure that all of our four inch pieces or three inch pieces, two inch pieces, one inch pieces are all consistent with each other. And this stop block is going to ensure that. So you can see I'm just adjusting the stop block there until I reach that uh, exact four inch size to cut all of my four inch pieces. And then I can go ahead and get everything all cut. I'll have in the description all of the amounts that I cut for each piece. But roughly for the one inches, it's about half a bucket. Two inches is one full bucket, you can see right there. Three inches is one full bucket and about maybe a quarter. And four inches is about three quarters of a bucket. So after all 400 plus of your blocks are cut, now is my favorite part, which is the worst part, <laughs> is the sanding. And I'm just using a handheld sander here clamped into my bench. So I can kind of do two at a time like that. If you had a bench top sander or just a larger scale um, sander, this could, could be a little bit more efficient with it. Um, but this is how I do it with the tools that I have available to me. Uh, two at a time just to increase that efficiency. And there you go, just lots of sanding over and over and over again until we get all 400 plus of these pieces all nice and sanded. And this is an important step, so that way when we glue everything together, the blocks can actually sit up next to each other. If there's any big burrs on these pieces of wood, it can create gaps when you try to glue them all together. So this is an important step, and it helps make it look better as well, right? So here's our backing. It is a two by foot piece of three quarter inch plywood. And you can see I have all my sanded pieces there. And then here's just a chart of the pattern that I follow. I will provide a link to the Tape Op Magazine article where I found this pattern. And it's actually referenced from a BBC um, publication that they did years and years ago. But I will add that all as a link on the description and over the video. So you guys can click the link and look at the pattern for yourself when you build your own diffuser. So this is the most important step is the very first row. I'm using my level there to make sure that all of these pieces are glued in directly in line with that factory cut edge of this two by four foot backing because I know since that edge is factory cut that it's totally straight and it's square. So if I reference off of that factory edge with this first row of blocks, then the rest of my diffuser as we glue the blocks in will be all straight and true with each other. So getting the second row line there. So basically I just align all the blocks, make sure they're all orientated the right way. And then I just glue them in, um, only putting glue where it calls for a block and not putting any glue where it's a zero on the pattern just to keep our backing nice and neat and to minimize the seepage of all this um, wood glue. I'm just using standard uh, Gorilla Glue wood glue here. Uh, you can use any type of wood glue, carpenter's glue, anything uh, that's used for wood will work for this purpose. So. This is the tedious part, just following the pattern, uh, getting everything glued in, making sure it's all nice and straight and square. I'm using my square and a level there and I'm referencing from both sides of my factory edges uh, just to make sure that as each row goes in that it's all nice and square with each other. There you can see the finished glue up and you can see that nice straight edge that we achieved by using our level and our square. And all of that excess wood from the backing is now gonna get cut off. 
and that allows for our frame. That way our final diffuser size with the frame ends up being two feet by four feet. And that's what we advertise this size at for our clients. Um, so that's how we make this particular size, final size being two feet by four feet. There is my planer. Uh, you could certainly just use a circular saw or another saw just to cut this, uh, the majority of this material off um, from behind. Um, I just like using the planer. It, it allows me to get really nice and close and I can even plane some of the blocks um, to make sure everything's nice and flat and straight. That way when we fit our frame, um, everything has a nice snug fit and it doesn't, we don't have to uh, go around any bulges or anything um, of the um, pieces of the diffuser. So I'm using one by six by eight lumber to make this particular frame for this diffuser. You can see my final size there for the diffuser itself is 46 and a, and a half an inch plus all of the material. We want to account for the material um, of this frame because my top and bottom, the long pieces of this frame, have to stick out a little bit further so that it, I can cut uh, or so I can nail in rather that smaller piece. So you can see I left a bit more of an overhang there and I'm tacking in that edge while there's that overhang so I can get my pencil mark of where the frame is going to be very, very snug. You'll see that step right here. I'm using a 18 gauge brad nailer to do this step. And I used to use a 16 gauge. Um, I switched over to this 18 gauge um, recently and both, both work totally fine. Um, and so I'm just getting two nails tacked into each corner. You can see that has a nice snug fit. And I'm doing this just so I can get my fitment correct, make sure that if I do have to adjust anything, it's not fully nailed in. That way I can just knock it out with the hammer and um, I can cut any pieces if necessary. And you can see that. So I got my pencil marks right there where the board meets the top board. And I can just knock this all out and get those two boards trimmed up to the right size right at my pencil mark. And then I know that when I reassemble this frame, that it's going to have a nice snug fit around our diffuser. So just trimming those sides up and getting everything ready to nail back together. So just laying it out and making sure that everything is all nice and straight when we nail it in. And I still start with those just uh, two nails per corner. And then I can take the frame off and add the rest of the nails. I do six nails per corner. You can see it has that nice snug fit. That's what we want. We don't really want much play in this frame for the final install. We want it to be a nice and snug fix. This is a floating frame and it goes on to hide the mount of the diffuser. Uh, and just gives a really nice final look on the wall, nice finished look. So you can see once our fitment's good, I can just sand up all the edges. We make sure that everything sits nice and flat and that the rear side is flat as well. That way it sits flat up against the wall. And there's some final shots of how the diffuser looks before any sort of paint or stain. And this client decided on flat black for the diffuser itself and then a red for the frame to match their branding colors. And I usually use spray paint to paint uh, to paint my diffusers. I'm just using the Rust-Oleum here, the Ultra Cover in the flat black. And I like to just have it laid out horizontally here and I can just spray as much as I can. And then I turn it just uh, so I can see it in a different light and I'll get any spots that I missed. I'm looking at it from that certain angle. And then I can get up close and just touch up any other spots. And there it is. So that's ready to dry. And while that's drying, I can paint the frame. So same deal, just spray paint for the frame. But actually before we paint, I'm using some wood filler just to fill some of those nail holes and to fill where those butt uh, joints meet up right there. And this just helps give a nicer uh, finished look when we paint the frame. So I can just wood fill that, I'll let it dry and just give it a quick sand. And there you can see that just to fill in those little holes, just a little kind of quick attention to detail um, uh, for the finished product, right? So just hitting it with some spray paint, both sides and making sure that I get that thin edge as well on both sides. That way 
um, when we're looking at it straight on. And even if someone's looking at it right from the side, uh, which is where the entrance to this particular studio is, we want to make sure that there's no uh, spots that are missing any paint, right? So we spray both sides, make sure we have plenty of coats. And now we can get started on our mount. So I'm using a two by six lumber right here. You can see I'm setting up my table saw on a 45 degree angle because we are going to make what is called a French cleat. And basically that's just two 45 degree pieces of lumber that lock into each other like this. And we mount one side on the wall and one side on the panel and they are just opposite and they just lock right into each other. Um, this is a really common system and there you can see it. So just adjust your table saw. Um, for mine, it was one and three quarter inches. If uh, your fence and all your measurements are on, that sh is what it should be for your standard uh, two by six. But just do a test cut first, make sure everything's all good before you actually rip this cut all the way down the length of your mount. And you just wanna make sure that your mount is just shy shorter of your diffuser itself. That way when we slide the frame on, it is not obstructed by this mount. So this mount in right here is 46 inches wide and my diffuser was 46 and a half inches wide. So just a little bit of um, wiggle room within so that when we screw this into the back of the diffuser, it's not gonna obstruct the frame when we slide it on. Here's the room that this diffuser is getting installed in. This is the production room at University of Toronto in Scarborough campus. This is the second room that we are renovating. You can see the previous podcast studio video that we did here on the channel. And that rear wall to their setup there is exactly where the diffuser is gonna go. You can see we did acoustic panels for this room. I will link to another video somewhere here uh, to see how to build and install those types of acoustic panels. You can see we set up our laser, everything's nice and level to that door frame. And that's also where the top of our diffuser frame is going to be level to as well. So it's important that I get all of my measurements correct. We are lining up this diffuser so that the center of the diffuser is matched to that center horizontal panel in the front of the room. That references the center of their setup where their monitors are gonna be placed. So we wanna make sure that this diffuser is set up completely in line with that uh, front to rear of the room. So I'm just getting everything marked out. I know that based off the measurements of my diffuser frame, which is the final dimensions, that, which is gonna be mounted on the wall, it is 48 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So I can just reference off my laser being the top mark. I can reference all the way down. And you can see I used my stud finder there just to mark out where the studs are, because that's where we need to drill the other opposite side of the mount into the wall. So that's a crucial step. This is commercial construction, so those studs are 24 inches apart. Um, ideally, um, in more residential, when it's 16 inches, I like to hit three studs whenever I install the diffusers. Um, but the two studs is plenty strong enough. We got six screws into the studs there. So now I'm just marking out on the rear of the diffuser where our mount is going to go. And I marked seven inches down um, to the top of this French cleat. So you can see that is how it should look. And you can see I'm gonna be drilling into that row, the sixth row there, where there it starts without a block. So this is another crucial step. I am looking at the front of that row of diffuser blocks and I'm marking out on the rear, wherever it's a piece that's either one inch or where it is where there isn't a block at all. Because if I use my three inch construction screws and I drive through one of those one inch or, or uh, spots where there's no block at all, you're gonna see that screw from the front. And I really don't want anyone to see that screw from the front, that would ruin the look. So I'm just going ahead and marking everything out there. That way, when I screw in my final mount right here, I can just screw everywhere that there isn't an X is clear, it's all good to go. So I can just get all of my screws screwed in there and then everything is good to go. And just getting plenty of screws in here. Um, the five to six is enough, but we like to just add some extra insurance, especially since this is a commercial install. I want to make sure everything's nice and solid for these guys. And I'm just adding a stop block there at the bottom, just another three inch scrap piece of diffuser wood. And that's just to make sure that the diffuser sits nice and flat up against the installed wall. So you can see I'm just test fitting the opposite side of the French cleat into the one that's installed on the rear of the diffuser. And I can get my measurements from the very top of the diffuser down to where that French cleat is. 
And that way I know how low off of the laser line I need to measure um, in order of where we need to mount this French cleat system. So for this particular diffuser, it was 12 and a quarter inches. You can see from the measurement right there. And now we have to account for the three quarters of an inch width of our frame. And we can just add that to our 12 and one quarter. So our final measurement ends up being 13 inches. So I'm just measuring 13 inches off of that laser line. And then I'm gonna use my level to make that a pencil mark and that will be where the bottom of the French cleat will, will rest, right? So we get our line put into the wall right there and we can get our French cleat ready. So I'm just marking the center so I can line it up with my reference center mark on the wall that's already there. And then we can pre-drill so that the uh, French cleat doesn't split when we drive in these screws into the studs and we can get it mounted. So first I get one side up and then I'll use the, le uh, the level to make sure that it's nice and level on the wall before I screw in the opposite side. And then I can get the remainders screwed in there. So you can see I'm just marking out where my studs are on the actual cleat itself so I can drill them out and then that will be ready to mount into the wall. So I'm just getting those screws started just to make it easier for me uh, one-handed to get this screwed in. Making sure that everything is in line there, that center mark is on. And as long as the one side line is on that 13 inch mark, then I can just get that first side screwed in and then just use my level and adjust up or down if need be before we get the second side screwed in because once that side is screwed in, then it is in there. So that's already super solid, but we're going to add another two screws so that we have three screws total in each stud, uh, giving us plenty of strength to hold these diffusers. And that's super solid. Now it's ready for mounting. So we're just going to lift this right in and it's simply just, you just lift right above that cleat and just drop it right down and just make sure it's lined up on both sides and it's as easy as that. Um, using this two by six, it's super strong and sturdy. Um, it gives you also the modularity to, you can make this whatever size you end up building your diffuser to. You just get two by six and you can make it whatever size you need. Right, so you can see lines up nice there and perfect room for our frame to hit that laser. So this is what the mount looks like. This is what it should look like when it's on your wall. And now you can see how once we slide the frame over, how it's going to hide that mounting system. Just give it a nice finished look. So we're ready to put the frame on now. And we put it on this way and ended up being uh, not the right way that I had it test fitted. So we took it off, flipped it around, and that was the better way uh, fit nicer and just giving it a little tap back together. And there's the finished product. So hopefully you learned how to build this yourself. And if you do take on a project like this, please email me pictures, comment below in the comments how it was for you, if you used any cool tricks for yourself, um, what size you built. Really appreciate you guys watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll have some other links for other videos um, from the channel. Uh, check out the previous room that we did here at UFT, uh, their podcast room. We're doing some really, really cool stuff in the ceiling in this particular room. Uh, coming up, we're going to be doing some fiber optic lights. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming. Stay tuned. This is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. Thanks for watching.